Hi, garden gals and guys. It is April 16th, and better late than never, I am getting these sweet peas that I've soaked for 24 hours and just emptied the water to go into the ground by direct sowing. I did not get them started in soil blocks like I did last year, though I highly recommend that method. Here we are, first tray is complete. But I have to tell you, I think the ones in the soil blocks look the healthiest. That worked really well, just starting them in soil blocks in the greenhouse 10 to 12 weeks before the last frost. But these are actually older ones and I want to try and use them up and I think they should still work, but they are packed for 2022, so that's a couple of years ago. So quickly, I've got Bougie Allais and Shanty, High Scent, April in Paris, Perfume Delight, Elegant Salmon Rose, and Elegance Deep Red. Quick peek outside, it's almost eight o'clock at night, so I don't have a lot of light, but I'll film where I am planting these in the morning. Little trick, take all these out on a tray and you can fit a lot on at once without having to juggle a bunch with your arms. This is my nighttime gardening look, and my husband got a new headlamp. Pretty great, right? And look at the first arrangement of the season. I picked these yesterday because they were looking so beautiful. A lot of those new specialty daffs I just planted just a month ago, which maybe I shouldn't cut off of them, but I couldn't help myself. So beautiful. I mean, look at this guy. Is that perfection or what? We've got Banana Splash down here with the ripply yellow. Love, love, love that one too. I think the one above it with the orangish peach petals is Dalnasaw. But really, they're all beautiful. Love, love, love. Good afternoon, everyone. It is the next day, and I'm going to show you where I planted the sweet peas I showed you last night. So here we have beautiful wooden trellis I bought last year. And so I put a bunch of different varieties in there. I did the same thing last year with a couple to a few different varieties and it was really beautiful. So I'm repeating that there. And same thing on the other side over here. Just direct sowed them right down into that pot, pushed them down a couple inches and covered them up with soil. I also put some in my old rusty trellis here, the Enchanted, Enchante, however you say that and this one here, because I had a lot extra. And while we're here, check out that daffodil border. They're coming up and they look marvelous. And then over here next to the lovely lilac bushes. I had Jeffrey Hughes on here last year. I think this is rivaling Restore Mel for my favorite, y'all. Jeffrey Hughes. It's like a rippling raspberry color through cream. I'll be honest, I'm not really spacing them a certain number of inches apart. I, at this point, I'm throwing them in there, pressing them down into the soil and saying, please grow. Now I am going to go back inside and show you my Florette sweet pea varieties that I am thrilled and super excited about because I think she has such unique varieties and the colors are just so vibrant and beautiful. But where those are going to go is I'm going to get a cattle panel for back here and attach it to that fence post so they have something to trail and grow up on. We just got this fence last year. I had sweet peas growing up here, but there was already a vine trellis thing back there. So I've got to get the cattle panel and do that. I think that's going to be the best solution for me this year. And then also up here where this trellis is, if you remember last year, I did the same thing with some sweet peas in these front beds. It was one of my favorite parts of the garden. So here off of the top of my head, I will plant at the bottom of this Restore Mel, my favorite sweet pea. It is this beautiful bright coral slash red one. Absolutely stunning. Maybe Mr. P and Blue Shift. Then up here we have Mr. P, which has been fantastic. We'll see what ends up going there though. 
Won't be long and the weeds will be out of these beds and they'll be flourishing with cut flowers, y'all. At least I certainly hope so. Amazing how that shifts. This right here is one of my favorite views of the garden. Love it, love it, love it. And then while I'm out here, we did get peonies planted yesterday. My nanny helped me because I can't shovel and move dirt anymore at this point in my pregnancy. But I did want to let you know where I ended up putting them and remind you of the variety types. Okay, there's three here in a triangle position. One also in the back there that is not out of the ground yet. These I bought last year for like... I don't know, eight bucks a piece. They're miniature, and I'm gonna have to look up the name because I completely, completely forget. But they're small and white. And I did five along this whole stretch by the greenhouse before the small cut flower bed. So there'll be a big stretch. And none of them are above the soil yet. These are all bare root. And some of them were looking a little dried up but I think they'll come to fruition because some of them had eyes so we have coral sunset lorelei 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 I thought that one was so stunning so I got three and then at the end back to a white one duchess de nemours I had never really planted peonies before but I looked it up and we just left the eyes which were the parts where you see new growth about one to two inches below the soil and that was it Okay, we are back inside. I just cleaned out the ramekins that those sweet peas were in, just in case there's any bacteria or anything in there, because I really care about these florette ones the most. These are for this year to be planted, and it's her last year of selling seeds that aren't the ones she breeded. So I want to collect as much seed for these sweet peas this year as possible. I'll go through the varieties in a second, but I did want to mention, I looked on the back of my Johnny Seed packets for sweet peas, and direct sowing is ideally six weeks before your last frost. I'm a week and a handful of days, as in like a week and two days out from my last frost, but I'm still direct sowing them. They take 75 to 90 days to grow to their full potential, and so that puts me around July 18th is 90 days. Sweet peas are a cool loving flower, so that's why usually you're starting them six weeks before your last frost, or ideally in the past I've started them 10 to 12 weeks before my last, my last frost because they love that cooler temperature and they start to wither away during warmer temperatures, but I'm pretty confident I can still get some blooms and at least gather more seed at the end of the season, but I think I'll get some blooms. And these colors are so vibrant. Oh, I can't wait to see it. So let's go through these varieties. Okay, first we have Mr. P. And I believe this was on my trellis out front last year. Really beautiful sweet pea. You can also see my note here, 10 to 12 weeks uh, is when I'm supposed to sow them starting indoors. Then we have Raspberry Flake from Flora up there with one of my favorites. Earl Grey, Bristol, Blue Shift, Horlock, Nimbus, really unique one, love that. Pretty sure I had this in my planters last year that were by the fence opening. And my favorite, Restore Mel, the punchiest pink slash red, so beautiful out front and it just gleams off of my black sided garage. Oh, I just love it there. You'll see I also marked the labels with florette, and that's just to remind me that these seeds I definitely need to save. So now I'll just open each one and put them in a ramekin with cool water in it and soak them overnight. Some people say they don't even soak them. Some people say they will nick them with like some sort of thing to make a little hole in them, but I've always had good luck soaking them overnight, so that's what I'm doing again. As far as being technical on your spacing and when you would pinch them, according to Florette's packets, plant spacing should be about six to eight inches apart when you're planting them, and then when you're pinching them, you're pinching them when they're about six inches tall. And if you're not sure what pinching means, it just means you're coming in on the plant, pinching about half of it off, and that will then promote new shoots 
to have more branching and more blooms. Now you might be wondering why I'm growing them if they don't have a good base life, which they have a shorter base life. That's only about four to five days at the max. I love these flowers. The scent flies me to the moon when they're blooming and the colors I just think are so punchy and unique. Even if I get a few days out of them in a bud vase, oh, it's worth it to me. It's one of those flowers that make me happy. FYI, they are poisonous, so don't let your pets or children eat them. Here we are. Soaking is underway, and then I will bring you along with me tomorrow morning when I plant these, and I'm gonna plant them before I have that cattle panel up. I'll have plenty of time to get that up for when they start growing and trellising. A couple other notes about sweet peas. Some people do start them in root trainers, which are those cell trays that are deeper because sweet pea roots are very big. So if I were to start them in soil blocks, which I think is my preferred method going forward, I would definitely use the two inch blocks. Those root trainers work well also because the root is so big. I've used those in the past. I've also used regular cell trays in the past and I've had okay luck with both of them. But really last year I had the best luck because it was the less work option and they were as healthy as could be nice and bright and green and i didn't feel like i was babysitting them as much as i was the cell tray ones in years past that being said any of those ways to start them should work including direct sewing this is my first year direct sewing so we'll see how it goes obviously i am uh five weeks late but it's okay We'll see what happens. Sweet peas are a cut and come again flower, which means the more you cut them or harvest them, the more they will come back for you. So it's great because you can cut and cut and cut and they keep coming and coming and coming. For longest face life, it's better to cut them when they haven't quite opened yet and they're still kind of in a closed phase, but I cut them at all times because I'm not always on top of my game at the right time. So they still are beautiful no matter when you cut them, in my opinion. Now, if I were a flower farmer, would I grow these for profitability? Probably definitely not because they don't have a long base life. So I'm not using them in very many bouquets and florists don't necessarily use them that often either because they don't have a long base life. So as far as profitability, if I were a flower farmer, would I put these at the top of the list? No, but I'm not and I'm a home gardener who loves them. So they grow in my garden. So I will bring you along tomorrow morning when I plant these by the fence in the small cup flower garden. But I'm gonna do my outro right now because it's easier to film it right now. Good morning, everyone. It's the next day. I'm outside here with my sweet peas that I've soaked overnight. And I'm getting my game plan together for planting. I went through and double checked some of the colors and Nimbus and Earl Grey are very similar. So I want them in different places and restore on my favorite i want again up front on the trellis against the black siding and blue shift is kind of a colorful bluish purplish with the slight pink so i think that'll tie in well there and also work with nimbus so it's going to be really busy it's not going to be simple but you know me i love the color bring it to me so these three up front on the trellis and then the rest of these will go in the cutting garden against the cattle panel that i was showing you last night and it's starting to rain so let's get this done when we wake hear the birds and see the sun side by side our fears are done oh the good times just begun And then I've got the trellis all set up here. Oh, see the top of it? But I've had a critter, so I've got to fill in that hole there first. Okay, about a quarter inch deep and then covering it up just like the other area. Flying low under the radar. And we're done. Things that are on deck immediately are mahogany splendor hibiscus, getting those planted, getting my emerald tassels amaranth planted, getting some more tomatoes started. All of those will be in two inch soil blocks. My snapdragons, which are coming along nicely, 
will be propagated because I want even more of them. That simply means when I come in and pinch them, I'm gonna take the pinched one, put it into a cell tray with soil, and dip it in rooting hormone before I put it in the tray, and it will take off and grow and become its own new plant. That's just a simple way of multiplying my stock. And because I didn't have great germination on some of them this year, I'm going to try and do that before I officially plant my snapdragons out, which is any day now. I have started the hardening off process with my seedlings, and I will link that video below. I did a short on it so that they are acclimated to the weather outside when they officially go out. All right, everybody, I'm gonna stop that video here. Please comment below with your favorite sweet peas and how you've done them this year. If you've had success starting them in soil blocks or cell trays or direct sowing, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to follow along with all things garden. I would love to have you here. We'll see you in the next one, everybody. Happy planting. Bye.